It's been reported that over 36% of Nigerians are excluded from the formal financial services, that is, staggering, no doubt. And given its attendant consequences on the economy, we know this is one area that they should actually move to actually address. And this is where the Central Bank of Nigeria is stepping in once again to reactivate its financial inclusion advocacy as a tool for economic development, particularly in the areas of poverty reduction, employment generation, wealth creation, as well as improving the general standard of living for the people. Now, questions will be, who are the most affected and why? And how can Nigeria meet the set target of involving about 80% of its adult citizens in financial services by 2020, which is what was agreed at a meeting uh, that took place some time ago in Mexico, as of course on finances. Now, the financial sector will also do to engender confidence that will stimulate patronage from Nigerians. How do we grow the economy through quality banking services? These, as well as other questions, will we attempt to answer on the program Nigeria Today. My guest will be revealed in a moment. My name is Blessing Abu. Welcome to Nigeria Today. Yes, joining me on set, I'd like to welcome Mr. Omale Ben Amadu. He is a development consultant, and I'm sure you've seen his face on one of our editions of the program. But welcome once again. Thank you, madam. Now, first things first, let's open with your perspective on why we still have so much number despite all the moves here and there to actually get them involved financially have them included we still have this staggering number what do, what's your take on that uh, personally i still feel that even the figure quoted that uh, having some 30 something percent i'm not even sure that we have up to, that, to that. Uh, that number and the issue is one of it is a uh, the it's, it's uh, income it is not how much you have enough that can enable you put into the, the bank. Okay. If not, the banking, as a, I mean, as a practice, is a thing of pride for somebody to flaunt, a, a, I mean, a, a checkbook or a teller or an ATM card is a, is a material to flaunt. Mm -hmm. But ordinarily, because maybe the the amount of income an individual has it makes it difficult for him to even keep some in the bank. Okay. Now, but, but what in your opinion, let's look at even some of those reasons why people would ordinarily, like you said, if they have, if, they, if the income power is there, why would people not even want to even get uh, encouraged to go bank in the first instance or get themselves financially included? Formerly, people felt so, so changed when it goes to banks that you go and spend so much time with all the troubles before you can get your money back. Some other aspect is the technicalities of uh, non-identification. Okay. You, uh, you are putting the money, nobody cares about how much you are putting. But when you come to draw your own money, <laughs> they start looking at the irregularities of your signature or your name or one spelling or how your name was arranged in the, in the form of a registration. Some of those things, some people might be uh, my feel uh, otherwise and okay if that is the case let me keep the cash back mm -hmm. in the house or wherever also when there is suspicion okay. on source of income people are afraid to be traced to how much they are worth okay so it's not just uh, a poor person stuff it's now it's just also a poor person for, stuff only. for the supposed rich yeah. and wealthy yeah. so there are su such uh, fears entertained i am not a banker <laughs> But I have interaction with bankers, mm -hmm. and you, it, it will shock you to hear that there are, so, there are people with so much money in the banks that are not recorded. Wow. And that uh, what they have, any time of the day or night, they could access their funds, maybe because of the financial influence they have on, on their, uh, their resources that they have with the bank. But you discover that so much of uh, things that happen, necessarily when it comes to political activities, much of the money that goes around are not are not through the banking procedures. So how is it escaping the the attention of those who should regulate all of this? Well, it is uh, it's, it's also a matter of compromise. What you are supposed to do, you know how to do it, yet you refuse to do it. Hmm. That's the uh, that's why I call it compromise, and it's, it's deliberate failure of what is supposed to be done and people deliberately refuse to do it. Okay, now let's take a look at one area you just made mention of and um, 
the cumbersome nature to which okay i have my cash and i bring it or i bring whatever service to the banking um, hall or at least institutions now but in my coming back either maybe i seek a loan or some other forms of assistance now it becomes difficult how how much of this is telling on the populace be they maybe the, the the down today if you want to use that word at least those level low level income people as well as other people who want to come around how, how has this impacted i'm happy you're looking back at the low level people to be on the safe side let's call mm -hmm. give them that grace mm -hmm. of that name mm -hmm. uh, you discover that so much of it uh, just recently i had uh, one of uh, one, one uh, financier well let me call him a financier thinking about how to invest into into one sector of the economy and when he approached the, the bank, he had to go to the CBN. And he discovered that the amount of money voted for small and medium enterprises, that about 70% of it has been taken by one person. Hmm. So if the people who are actually supposed to have access to these funds do not have the access, if the little they have, they will, they will rather decide to keep their money and, and, and play around with it. Anytime you need it, you get it. After all, the banks are not helping you to get it. It's a long time you've had about 22 billion naira or dollars or whatever currency has been in the bank for the medium and small enterprises. But uh, it has never, uh, it's yet surprising that you discover that so much complaints are here and there that people, they, those of that, let me call them, the, like you said, the downtrodden, actually. They have been downtrodden on the, they have been trodden down on it because what is belonging to them, they don't have the access to it. So oh. why would you encourage them to come and patronize your services if you are not helping them out? Hmm. Okay, now l l let's look at where this uh, big uh, fractions is um, hanging on, at least the low sidedness to, for, for some they'll think, okay, maybe it's more in the rural areas, for some could think it's urban, is it the male, is it the female, as in perhaps, where do we have this more, uh, since you said you have more friends in the bank, so I'm sure you will have some it other It is things. more in the rural sector, the rural side of the economy, or of the population. Most especially now, recently I discovered, I just got information from somebody about microfinance banks their capital base being increased. The amount of resources the people have at the local areas that they should use into the banking, mm. it is not much. And they expect that they, they should, their money should be recycled uh, funding. You give them a little, they pay back after some time and they get a little more and they pay back over that. And when these commercial, uh, microfinance banks are being scrapped, then it means you are taking the banks far away from them. It makes it much more difficult that if we care is not taken, the 2020 is just a year. Is, I can say it is less than a year it's away from now. So we have already talked about a, a, a one program 202020, and we don't know where that one has gone to. Whether it has gone into the bush or gone into the tin air, it has not been achieved yet. And now we're talking about the banking uh, drawing together 80 percent of the Nigerian population. It is an utopian uh, uh, venture. So why, 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 why not uh, trying to discourage whatever feelings you, you have or dissuade from that? L let's have a broad idea of where and how financial inclusion can actually help the people. Because, for the, like you said, advocacy is key, yeah. or at least it's what they're trying to push. But getting this across to the people, how effective has it been from what you've seen? One of the schemes the government is, ent is entering into, this uh, market money or trader money, a scheme of that nature, I, I still not get very convinced of the implementation scheme. But it would have been one of the best approaches to it, that you make it reach everybody in good time. The cooperative societies, some of them who have gone into farming or agricultural uh, ventures and have been soliciting for funds for some two years now, the funds are not coming to them. If they get discouraged like that, how would you encourage them to return to the banking sector, mm. to patronize the banks? There was a time this Fadama scheme came, about uh, Fadama 2 or Fadama 3. People applied for it, subvention that was supposed to be given to them or grant or whatever tag it was carrying. Mm. It took them two to three years. There's another one there now that some people have applied. I don't know how they call it any longer, but about two years ago, okay. and it is still not implemented. It gives, I mean, it, it brings, it makes them develop apathy 
towards patronizing whatever facility or service you try mm. to render to the society. Okay, so access to this, it's very important. Access to it is okay. critical and crucial. Okay. Once so, they have means of uh, easy access to it, it will encourage them. You see, in uh, uh, the cooperative societies in most organizations, you see that it, it, they are booming because they help the staff, the members. You ask for some little money, they give you. As you pay back uh, in time, you ask for a, a larger sum of money, they still give it to you. Mm -hmm. But when you don't have access to it, some of them might even withdraw from the membership of the cooperative society. Okay, so already we've talked about access and also now the advocacy should be, uh, should be more. But what about uh, aspects of financial literacy as well? What and what do the people need to do or to know Yes, you might say, okay, maybe they are schooled in the art of doing their own business in the way they understand, but we still need to take them through. So, aspect of looking at fraudulent acts or corrupt tendencies to actually curb that. What As for think? if they have good access to the funding, mm. the issue of corruption does not even bother somebody who has benefited from a scheme. Of course, there will be PR. As you go and you have the facilities extended to you, the happiness, the joy you derive from having access to it will make you forget. You see, it is ironic that if things of fraud is going to take place, it's in bits. But that becomes insignificant to the, benefic to the beneficiary. Mm. Once they get it, they forget about the little that you are, you are generating from them. So it is better you get them get informed about it and make it available to them. You will draw them. You know, followership is very easy. Like, uh, what, there are three elements in leadership. In that kind of a thing, the leader must know, and the leader must know that he knows, and he must make it abundantly clear to those around him that he knows. And because it is not, a, I mean, it's not a forum for angels. You, in leadership, once you get it done well, you 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 acquire a lot of friends, and you also create lots of bitter enemies. Okay, so still looking at trust. Yes. Consumer education, yes. at least, or, or at least understanding of what they should get yes. at whatever point in time, is critical here. Yes. How strong do you see this? In at least, you 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 walk around you and you see some of the business uh, interests yes. uh, from whatever divides. How strong is this consumer if somebody, protection? If somebody has assessed a facility, benefiting from it, he becomes your marketer. The banks, the government does not have too much well, trouble to do in the advocacy. Get some people into the scheme. Let them benefit from it. They are the ones who propagate on the message. Okay. And it reaches people easily. Mm -hmm. You don't need too much trouble about all these uh, advocacy or things of that nature. Get some people. You, there are schemes that they call pilot schemes. Okay. Do it on individuals. Use the individuals as your, as your strategies so that they will be able to help you to uh, expand the, the so scheme. So, word, uh, word of mouth is yes, strong. Yes. Okay, Mr. Uh, but when we get back from this break to actually take a look at uh, the viewpoints from residents of the city uh, how and what they understand about this capturing the unbanked in this uh, t uh, time and season, as we look into uh, areas of advocacy towards 2020, we'll be right back and we'll look at some other areas in conclusion on our program. You're watching Nigeria Today. Let's go to the streets and we'll be right back to continue the discussion. It's a good idea. There are benefit, economic benefit to do with uh, the country, the entire population being on bank, uh, being on the banking list. Actually, people may not be willing to bank their money. One, as a result of illiteracy, so some may feel that why do I go to the bank to go and keep my money there without anything? So I prefer they will prefer to keep it at home. And then two, because. Uh, some are, maybe they are afraid of being uh, accused of corruption. Some persons might not be well informed, you know, the need for them to bank their money. Now, another challenge also is that I have my money, take it to the bank, if I want to get it, it becomes a problem. So the, the processes become so difficult for you to assess your money and if you want to do anything with your money in a short space of time, it's a challenge. There are many disadvantages of not banking your money. But basically, you expose that such a fund to theft, robbery, 
which can happen in an environment that is not very high on security. The first reason I will say is the education. People need to be educated more on the importance of banking their money, keeping their money in the bank. Because a lot of people does not even know the reason why they should do that. Um, most especially in the rural area. It is the right of um, the Nigerian citizen to decide where to keep their money. Yes, it is good that the bank has been there, has been established for us to save money, which is like an advice given to us by the CBN that we can keep our money at the banks, you understand me? But I think it is still left for um, the person who has the money to decide where to keep his money. Look, I think it's their choice. I know of so many people, they are, it's not like they are even petty traders. They have a lot of money and they decide to just keep it at home in their safe or something. So I think it's their choice. What a choice the people have, really. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I saw you giggling in between. Yeah. So what's your take on some of the responses so far? They are too realistic to disagree. <laughs> the views are actually, in, I mean, in practice. Because people, so they're like uh, what somebody said, some people are scared of going to the bank. Some are having the fears of uh, what if I go and uh, you know, I don't, I'm not able to get access it. Some others are afraid of the funding, like I said earlier. Mm -hmm. You have gone to put your money automatically about the, the, the security agencies or whoever are in charge of it. They all know how much value you are. I mean, it's your personality. Some people, by because of that alone, will keep some of their a chunk of uh, funds in the house or uh, in vaults or wherever. <laughs> okay, now let, let, uh, for for so many uh, nation, definitely through SMA, you've already talked about uh, SMA um, is of course having that chunk mm -hmm. to actually give out, mm -hmm. and this is where the target for most um, government institutions or, or at least is trained to look through now. Not giving enough education, not giving enough advocacy is going to definitely stall the activities on, of having the economy develop to the level we want it to be. How do, you, how do you hope to advise or what kind of advice will you be giving the government uh, institutions and even the government at large, whatever the tier, to actually look into this? I feel one of the first strategies the government should adopt to be looking back at these microfinance banks they should reduce their capital base so that they will be more functional because as you increase it most of them will no more be able to meet up the requirements and they will be closed and as they get closed the distance between the the local community and the bank gets wider and uh, well, you see, there was one american president i can't picture the actual name who said to keep an economy moving even if it requires engaging people to dig trenches in one day and fill it back the second day, it means money is being, I mean, uh, income is being exchanged, is revolving around them. It will keep them busy and the economy can move. If you don't have these facilities for them to use at the rural areas, no matter how buoyant you are, how functional the banking system is in the rural, in the, I mean in the developed areas or urban areas, it will still not be as much as uh, impactive as it's supposed to be. Now, one of the schemes in, I mean, in first, I mean encouraging the, the, the small banks and the microfinance banks is that the loans you are giving them, you are giving them through those microfinance banks. And then at the payback, it is also through there. Like I said earlier, it is joy that you have facility. Go to some of these rural areas within a, I mean, a surroundings in, a, in the federal capital and see how young boys and girls are happy chatting around the ATM uh, centers. That alone gives them some element of some level of joy that they are interacting with people and they, I have an ATM card I can go to draw. I don't so want that's to, the status uh, thing yes, too? yes, I don't want to I don't want to look at it from a situation that uh, uh, lack of information is there any longer because even in the rural in the rural areas the phones have gone over there. What do you do with the phones? You must recharge your phone and you buy a recharge card 
How do you recharge it? However, it is done, whether be between the buyer and the seller, even if it is the seller that is recharging the phone. So it's a service. It's a, it's a, a service render. Service. So it, may, it, mean it brings about much more, a higher level of interaction. Hmm. So the issue of uh, information or not is, uh, is, is relatively little now. It's not as uh, significant as it used to be any longer. Hmm, okay. Uh, all right. Um, for, for, for you, I asked earlier, perhaps uh, we answered it uh, halfway. Where do you see the greatest uh, number of this unbanked people? Women, men, young, old? Women. Women and, uh, well, the old. Many of them don't even have the time to go banking any longer. They live on their children. They live on other things. And uh, they don't have much to do with uh, banking activities. But uh, for the, uh, the average level, you know, unfortunately, our society has uh, tactically drawn off the middle cadre. Mm -hmm. If not, those are the, the, the area, the strata of the society that is supposed to be more, I mean, functional in banking activities. But now the upper and the lower class, well, the lower class are the ones who are the, that are more uh, disadvantaged and the more unbanked. Okay. Mr. Amadou, at the, at the heart of this, is issue of customer satisfaction yes. and some kind of services even the financial institutions provide. Yes. There have been complaints about, okay, you heard some of the complaints even from, via the uh, uh, respondent from the streets. Also, the issue of uh, charges, excessive ch charges. Inadvertently, customers are dissatisfied in one way or the other. How do you th want us to s look into this? I was even going to mention that before it skipped me. Mm. This issue of uh, little little charges is very discouraging it's like somebody one of my friends told me and i were discussing say i can buy a car for one million naira if i have the one million i can buy a car for one or five or ten million but what pains me most is about fueling <laughs> i don't like the car that consumes fuel no matter how much love i have for it the banks are there for people to to patronize but these small small charges of 65 kobo 40 52, kubu, naira, 52 here. naira here, this one and that. Is maintenance this charge. Maintenance charge. VAT, so, VAT, the, so many month, charges. Um, text you, messages. Uh, multiple, no, account no, maintenance. Uh, double, double charges or triple or quadruple charges is discouraging a lot of people. One day one of my daughters said, uh, no, let me withdraw in bulk because these charges that my bank is doing, I don't like it any longer. And if care is not taken, I can stop banking. Hmm. If it discourages young ones like that, then if they have any means of keeping their funds away from the banks, they will do it. So I have been, uh, we've been told that the central bank has, from time to time, been reviewing the stoppage of these charges. But the charges are still ongoing. That's one area they are supposed to look into. Okay. So how is uh, technology and education going to be helping in all of this to include? Everyone. Yes, but uh, I don't buy the and idea. And it's achieving uh, yes, 2020, uh, yes, even though you said you, you, you don't see it uh, uh, being no, realized. It's, it's not, utopian. It's, it's not really feasible to, to realize okay. that in, in 11 months. What we have been following for the past four, five, six years and then cannot be achieved. It's not achievable in 11 months. So in how one, will yeah. technology help with this? Because if some of the services must go as far as we want them to be. This cashless scheme. If not for what people would think about a uh, lack of knowledge or education at the low level, the cashless uh, facility is beginning to help a lot. Mm -hmm. Transfer of funds, you don't need to carry bulk cash in, um, on you any longer. And then you transfer and uh, you, you, as you make your transfers, the charges are there. But of course, if you look at it the other way, what would have cost you to transport yourself from here to Wuse or to Bega or, Bega or to Gariki or to Nyanya or Marama to go and give somebody well, uh, 10,000 Naira will be more than the charges that, you have, that, you have, that, you, that is inflicted on you by transfers. Mm. So it is helping, technology is helping, it's improving on the facility and it is a good thing. Mr. Omale Ben Amadou, Development Consultant, thank you very much for coming on Nigeria today. I appreciate your insight. Thank you. I wish you well. Okay. And let's um, help advocate uh, and give the advocacy that more should be done when it means uh, financial inclusion is going to be worth our while. They should use people like <laughs> us to help them advocate. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs>
All right, that's Nigeria Today. Thank you so much for watching. You can actually see this uh, edition or any other edition online at www.youtube.com forward slash NTA News 24. My name is Blessing Abu. Have yourself a great night rest.